mistake. Let me raise my eyebrows. They might fall off. <laughs> if one of them falls off during the recording, I think I will find that very amusing. <laughs> it's just the second lot I had to put on because I sweated so much. The first lot fell off. <laughs> the trouble with trying to look like Jenny Linden, isn't it? And welcome to a talking about not quite a special. I'm not going to call it a special. We are off to the movies. Ooh, ooh! I've got my popcorn here, so if Jason starts talking, I can just. <laughs> I can still get the camera back. <laughs> oh, look at him with his tap tap. <laughs> I'm just going to have to bow to two superior attention-seeking queens at this point. I think. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> like us, subscribe to us, notify us. We are talking about the Dot Two movies. We're going to do one this week and then one either next week or at a later date. I don't know. I don't decide these things. Um, I am Paul or Pebal, and I am joined by. Hello, it's James. And hello, it's Jason. Is it like James Eon? <laughs> yeah, James Eon. <laughs> come as a come as a, a very warm fall. <laughs> No, it's strangely not quite as camp as the actual one. Anyway, we'll, we'll come. We'll come on to that. I think. <laughs> um, so we are talking today about Doctor Who and the Daleks. Yeah. Oh, that's, only, that's only a little chill down my spine. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Who's introducing it anyway? There's two films, so you could do one he's each. Just waving his arms at me. He's seen the popcorn. That's what he's after now. You that's see what that. I'm after. I've, I've just got excited about there being popcorn. But I think, James, <laughs> soon as you've dyed your beard, especially for the cosplay this week, you should do the uh, introduction. <laughs> I, I do it with the blue eyeshadowiness as well. Um, uh, yeah, so all aboard the TARDIS, or no, no, what no. It's called, it's called TARDIS, isn't it? TARDIS. It's not, it's not the TARDIS, it's TARDIS, uh, for a family outing that ends up with some diabolical Dalek um, attempting to wipe out the Thals. So we are entering into the world of the Doctor Who movies and Peter Cushing taking the role as Doctor Who in Technicolor. Um, and it's, uh, I, I'm sure we will go through elements of the story. Most people would know it by now. Uh, but in this version, um, you have um, Doctor Who, as he, as he is referred to as Doctor Who in this. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm sure he says his two granddaughters, uh, he calls them Susan and uh, Barbara, and then uh, boyfriend Ian pops round, uh, you know, for a bit of a date, and they end up in TARDIS. Um, <laughs> 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 TARDIS. Uh, and off for an adventure um, on, um, oh, what's it called? Scarra. Scarra. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. There we go. That's our starter. So there we go. It's on his home planet. What's, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit weird because um, when I was reading about it, they they referred to Susan as the granddaughter, but Barbara is the daughter. But he says my two granddaughters in the in the actual film. He says these are my two granddaughters. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's. Um, Barbara's not not Susan's mama. It's yeah, sisters. Yeah, it's 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 a really. Well, there's quite an age gap there. there there's a, there's a whole the whole family backstory we're not getting here because mum and dad are missing from the picture and not referenced. Um, yeah, Granny Who's not about. I don't know. I just love the fact that Who is the surname. I love I love that it's Susan Who and and Barbara Who. Barbara Who, and Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes, it's Roy Castle goes, Doctor Who. And it's it, it's really, it's really odd. But there we go. I mean, it, it's it's an interpretation, isn't it? That's it is. The... And the movies are an interpretation. And my 
uh, actually, I'm going to be, I'm not, I wasn't old enough to see this on its original theatrical release. I'm just going to get this out there now before everyone else does. My eyebrow's going to fall off. <laughs> 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 and, and people say that Jason hasn't got a sense of humour. I mean, what, what are they about? <laughs> but I can remember going to watch this in the cinema. That's because you went like about a week ago. ago when they reissued the new Mac. Oh, I'm not out. talking about that one. I'm talking about years and years and years ago. I um, can remember last month now. <laughs> But you know what? It is, it is very odd when you see this in colour and it's Technoscope and Technicolor uh, in all its gloriness. Um, and, it, you know, when you, when you actually sit down, so having seen the movies first before I ultimately ended up sitting down and watching the seven part um, television adaptation of this story, um, it's, 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 we were spoilt somewhat to have the Dalek movies um, before I watched the seven parter because, you know, watching it in black and white with Mr. Hartnell, it's all very nice. It all fits in. It's great. That's proper canon. That's proper Doctor Who. Um, there's something a little bit charming about the movie version of Doctor Who. What is that something, Jason? I don't know. It's probably just a little bit of a childhood charm for me that I sort of had it there in my childhood. Um, no, I think there's, oh. there's, it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice condensed version of what is, let's say, essentially quite a padded story in the television adaptation. Um, and it whips along quite nicely. And it's very nicely shot in proper colour. Um, but I kind of like it because it's an easy 80 minute watch. It's not a, it's not a difficult, challenging watch, is it? I, I think, dear viewer, if you get the chance to use the power of the internet and go back to watch our season review of season one, <laughs> someone, possibly myself, said that there was nothing that the first that the first Dalek story did in its seven episodes that the movie didn't do better in 79 minutes. And somebody, and I won't name any names here, went, oh, but the first Dalek story is a classic, you can't say that. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that anyone has changed their views or maybe readjusted their standpoint for this video. But we've come a long way since season one. <laughs> <laughs> More U-turns than a Tory, Jason. More U-turns <laughs> than a Tory. <laughs> it's funny because I. It, it is interesting if you if you if you put your mindset. There's different ways of watching this, obviously. Mm. But if you put your mindset of watching it in context it's quite interesting because this came out after the chase so we've had three tv stories although you do get character options are ever so thankful you do get a couple of the props appropriated don't you or in the in chase the so they chase. appear on television before before yeah yeah um so actually 65 it's the first chance to see Daleks in color it's the first chance to see them with money spent on them i'm not so i'm not going to slate or change budgets but that, you know, you can see, I mean, more so when we come on to the second one, but the first movie is like, bam, these, these look expensive, the sets look expensive, the, the Daleks look expensive, they're bright. I, I kind of, because it was weird, because my first experience was seeing this, was seeing the video of W.H. Smith's when I was a weaning, and it was a W.H. Smith exclusive, and I was kind of like, what is this? What is this cheap ass version of Doctor Who? It's it's a it's not DR. Who's doing that? Now I do it to upset people. But when I was little, it meant a lot to me. Um, it's DR Who. It's not a Doctor from TV. All the Daleks are really strange primary colours. What, what what the chisel's going on? Mm. But there is something. The, the, my experience of of these films was like bank holidays, bank bank holidays or Christmas. That was when. The, these films were on and I, and I remember the I think it was this this one in particular I was quite young and I was ill and I was in bed and I was not feeling very well and so my parents were like oh there's a film on the telly if you want to come down and, and watch it on the sofa and it was this and, and you're right it was like oh my god we're we're watching these these technicolor Daleks and and the Daleks have been enhanced for the 
for the movie. So they've got, you know, the wider at the bottom, you've got the thicker sort of pad, you've got the bigger lights, um, you know, they, they look more in, impressive as well. And I just remember being transfixed by it. And I didn't really know the Hartnell story. So th this was my sort of first introduction to it. And there is something beautiful ab about this and, and the other film in, in the way that it, it's made and, and the, like you say, you've got the Technicolor, you've got the, I mean, in this one, you've got things like the Petrified Forest, then you've got the, the city, um, you know, some of the sets, like the inside of TARDIS is just, it's just weird. Um, but, you know, I'm sure there's, there's probably reasons why it was the way that it was, at least it looked uh, similar on the, on the outside. Um, the but yeah, the, prop. the outer shell of the prop is gorgeous. The outer, yeah, it is. The police box it, design is really, really good in this one. The inside is basically mad inventor shed, basically, isn't it? It's just, it's, it, it's, it's, it just looks but, really. Up. But within that, it's quite interesting. I think that when when it came back in two thousand and five, that Russell sort of takes that, isn't he? Because you have the little Yale lock on the inside yeah. of the door, and and because. That was always the thing with the movies that it was it was like the, the shed door and you stepped out and you were there but you know you got the Yale lock and it was like a prop you know, like a door for a box mm. which was never the sort of you always had that kind of in the TV shows that kind of half oh what what are we doing here there's sort of a, a never sphere of black studio drape in between where we, we're not quite in or out and we don't quite know what the setup is where here is definitely it's the door and you're it's the door. And, and it, that's what sort of Russell went with as the. Yeah, I mean, when you when you look at like the Pertwee's story, like uh, uh, Death to the Daleks, where the hand cranking the door open, it's this huge, great big sort of, you know, the, the grey panel on the outside. It's like it's massive, whereas this is literally you are just outside the door. Um, and you're right, the, the more modern TARDIS is have have that where you just walk straight in through a door. Um, rather than the sort of big double doors that you get in sort of uh, classic who. But yeah, it, this is, th there is something, uh, there is something about it which is just, you know, just reminds me of being a child and, and watching it and, and, and pure nostalgia uh, for it, you know. And even though it, there are, we'll probably talk about some of the things that, that don't necessarily match up with the original or you know don't necessarily hit exactly the right note but there is a lot about this that is just like you know like I say just really nostalgic very nice to watch it, it's beautiful and I would absolutely agree with the design of the Daleks in this yes they had the chance to paint them up and make them all really nice bright colors but the design on them is beautiful with the um, the big fenders in particular, um, not everyone's cup of tea, but I kind of like the look of it, the way it also blends and the colours, and it makes them much taller and much more imposing, a, a la the Dalek invasion of a TV version, I suppose, but don't know, there's just a certain glossiness about them um, that's obviously, uh, you know, deliberately done, as, as we've said, for, for colour for the screen, but they feel like proper big Daleks and they, you know, or menacing and I imagine if they had flamethrowers which was the original idea that would have actually been quite epic it would have been a, a slightly singed Peter Cushing in hospital <laughs> at the end of day one filming <laughs> uh, so Peter think how quickly Babs's hair would have gone up <laughs> um yeah Lee said that they, they, there's, there's a little bit of a hiccup in there sort of sort of result but not because because the, they thought that the Daleks eye should always be flashing didn't they so that kind of uh, unlike the TV show where it's very definitely when they're talking, there's flashing mm. here. It's kind of like they're just being a bit jazzy around their, their, their sort of face. Um, but you do have those very sort of 60s futuristic things as well, don't you? Where it's kind of like it's a vision of the future, but the 1965 yeah. future and, and things where you think, well, Daleks have got like these claw things. Why have they, why have they got settings on their things that they, they never built? And their ticker tapes and stuff. And, it's kind of charming, isn't it? All that kind of stuff. It's when when the Dalit takes the um, the antidote 
off off seas and it's so like, delicately done and you're like there's, there's no way he sort of like slips into a jacket and takes it out and, um, and you're just thinking no it'd be, it'd be like one of those grabbers in a fairground <laughs> just, just keep slipping through um, great all their advanced technology they have a, a dalek biro don't they in paper they don't have a tab or anything like that it's it's right <laughs> all on on a sheet of a4 susan and, and some beautifully crafted lava lamps in there as well, just for extra aesthetic. Oh, yeah. And they have, apparently have a garden as well somewhere. So it's kind of like there's a garden, it's all that's nicely decorated out. It's kind of a home from home for the Daleks. <laughs> well, according to my extensive research on this, um, no, I, I saw something about lava lamps. Apparently, apparently this might be the first instance of a lava lamp on, on a on film. Wow. Ooh. Because they, they were quite a recent thing, so apparently mm. it's... It could, it could be. I mean, if anyone wants to trawl through British cinema for about two, three years and double check that. I, but yeah, apparently, I love that because because you have those. I think do we get our first space lava lamp in the wheel in space? Yeah, I think there is one, isn't there? But yeah, the, the, the Cybermen have them in the, the background, don't they, when they're on the rocket or something? I mean, mm -hmm. there's definitely wheel in space lava lamps, but. I've got, my doctor too extensive knowledge of lava lamps, I think that might be the first TV instance. I think of another one. <laughs> I love how the Daleks are all into their aesthetics because we've talked about them having those, you know, those plasma bulbs and they have lava lamps as well. It's just, it's great. Well, it must be someone giving them a polish as well because they're all very shiny. They must have like cleaning Daleks. They've got got maybe a, a sort of a duster on the end of one of their attachments that goes around just giving them a little polish. <laughs> yeah, um, they've obviously got different types of Daleks because I, 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 I must admit, I do find the, the one with the, um, with the, with the oxyacetylene cutter on it quite a, quite a fabulous design where it's literally just a, 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 almost an arm poking out of the prop with, with, um, the sort of the cover, if you like, but that that prop makes me laugh. That's like the Swiss Army Dalek, isn't it? It's just it's got interchangeable arms. <laughs> but but then they manage to exterminate through the floor in, in further on in the movie. So actually, there's no real need for because they they can shoot through the metal with their guns. Yeah, fire extinguisher is an odd one, isn't it? In some ways, I because I, 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 there's, the, there's the classic quote, isn't there, in the more than thirty years where Jane was like, "It's too scary for the kiddos." Um, but it's funny because it's sort of it sort of it works visually. Mm. I'm not sure if it entirely works. Um, I don't know. There's a sort of oddness because because it, it's a it's sort of like a gas release or something, isn't it? Rather, whereas, whereas I suppose in TV it's like a death ray, isn't it? Whereas it's a bit more of a. Do you, yeah, do you, know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like a targeted laser beam here. It's, oh, it's sort of a. In the early Dalek stories on TV, they sort of go negative, don't they, on the screen, so that you you get that that effect. Here, it's it's just literally the CO two canister, and there is that because there is points where they um, they just stun, don't they? They just like basically make you fall to the ground rather than fully full on exterminating you. Whereas it feels like it's exactly the same effect for for someone being exterminated. It's just a cloud of dust in their face, and that's it. You know lie down but um i i think it i think it <clears throat> does work it's very of the 60s i think it had there been a, i know for health and safety purposes they decided not to go with the, the flamethrower but can you imagine you know just b these people being torched alive by Daleks in, with a flamethrower it would have been quite gruesome the sad's like made of plastic and stuff as well isn't it there's the big thing about it being a, a mold is set the most expensive and all that sort so i kind of i just there's just part of it goes on one hand they're saying oh we didn't use flamethrowers because it would have been too scary for the kiddos on the other hand i'm like i can't imagine that amount of props going around with naked flame no all the synthetic trousers around as well i mean especially in that end scene where you've got the big fight in the control room you know, and they're, and they're basically spinning the Daleks around to fire on each other. And then um, uh, so you, Roy Castle ducks, doesn't he, in front of the computer and gets them to, 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 to blow it up. Can you imagine if there was like half a dozen flamethrowers going on while you had all the 
the the you know the actors running around pushing Daleks into into things that would have been carnage. Oh, there's no way. Uh, there's no way that would have got past any sort of health and safety body at all. I know the um, the TV regulars were all a bit miffed not to get to do the film. I mean, no real way they would have been able to do the film because you wouldn't have got the time off to do it. Um, what do we make of our Doctor? Our Doctor Who? I mean, I, I love Peter Cushing. I'm a massive fan of him and especially sort of, you know, the sort of horror stuff that he does. And I I, I think in, in this, you, you, you come across certain types of Peter Cushion characters, and in this, he he just plays it. But it, it's less doctory, if you if you like it. It's I I feel he's more grandfathery, uh, particularly at the beginning. But he has this uh, mischievousness about him. You know, when when he's conspiring with Susan to to basically sabotage the TARDIS so they can go and and explore. Um, you know, and, and obviously he's he's aged up in, in this. He's not as old as he is sort of portraying, but it's really difficult. I, I think he's got that good quality and that it's quite difficult to, to say how old he is. Um, I think there's less of a strangely, you know, off-world thing about him. I think there's, there's a lot more um, grounded... Um, a, a, I mean, they don't sort of say that he is a human or not, but there is, there's a lot more grounded in, in him than, than in, you know, uh, other portrayals. But I, I think he, he does make it his own. He's not copying Hartnell. Um, he, he has, you know, moments where I just think he, he really sort of owns, owns the role and makes it his own interpretation of it. He has an energy in there. <clears throat> mm. And he's got like a real sparkle in his in his eyes when he, you know, you, you can see he's actually pr probably quite enjoying playing the part. And he's he's working, as you said, already very well like opposite Roberta. And the, the the cheekiness and the interplay between the two of them is 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 really, really good. Um, I've always assumed Earth um, inventor type um, approach to the character rather than um although not specified as an alien in the film mm. i think it's classed more as an earth i've always taken it as earth inventor invents time machine and they get whisked away and have an adventure here and there um but no i i i i kind of like um his portrayal and um the energy um the twinkle in his eye and 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 i just he, he is a proper old gentleman in it and and it suits Doctor Who in in this setting, yeah, yeah, he has to be a, a an Earth person because they're they're basically living in a terraced house and they say, look, what we've invented here is in our lovely kept back garden. There's, there's, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's any illusion because I don't suppose it's that heavily. I mean, it is played as Doctor Who as an alien as a TV show, but it's not an overriding thing, especially early doors. I don't think. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it's very much. This is because you know Susan's just just very clever, isn't she? And she likes her book. And, you know, I don't. I don't think there's any hint. In the um, but it reminds me slightly, and it's it came out the year before. Uh, First Man in the Moon. Mm. It's, it's got a very similar sort of aesthetic to it. Um, uh, he's got a sort of he's got a bit of the touch of the Lionel Jeffries about his performance in it as well. He, he, I suppose it's not a million miles away in terms of whisking off to the other planet quite quickly, having the alien malice, malice, alien, alien menace there and then coming back. So I don't know whether that's, you know, that's what it slightly reminds me of. Um, of course, Peter and Roy had the year before, just what well, came out the same year, but they filmed the year before, uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. So they, they, they'd already sort of established the ratio. It ends better for them both in this story, though. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> you ever seen Dr. Terror's House of Horrors? It doesn't end so well in that. Um, great film. It's um, but it's not for kiddies. Not for the ki not for the kiddos. No. Um, Jenny, Lyndon, interestingly, because I know um, I know they did want Anne Bell, who is a tremendous actress. I'm not saying Jenny's not. Jenny's you know women in love and all that sort of stuff. Great. I don't know whether her Barbara slightly falls flat. I don't. 
I don't know whether it's is it a question of how it's written or how it's portrayed or something, but I think I think Peter's the eccentric Doctor Who scientist thing. Roberta is amazing. I think Roberta's mm. the star of the two things, isn't she? Because because to be a child actor and not want to choke them <laughs> is quite a skill. And she's really good and she's very intelligent and she's very aware of how she's playing. You know, it's, it's a great performance, Roberta. And Roy Castle is there to be the comedy foil for it. That's his part. And I don't know whether is it because it's not quite defined enough, or is it that that she's, she's not. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not hating on her. Don't mm. I'm hating on her. But I don't know whether the, the. I think it's possibly the same problem in the next movie. Is the, is the female lead in it slightly unrewarding? I think it. Uh, I think you're right. I think it comes down to how they separate the characters as well. What I know, we'll talk about the other movie. They do it slightly differently. They do different sort of sets of pairs. Uh, in in the other movie, and here you you know you really get Roberta has quite a lot you know where she is separated from everybody, where she's you know going and befriending the Thals and go, coming in and out of the city, dealing with the Daleks. There is there's a lot more for her to do in the story. Um, whereas I think you're right. I think with with um, Barbara's character, it, it, don't get me wrong, it's still got things to do, but is is with the group more than, as I say, like uh, Susan is separated, so has to fend for herself. So you don't really get to see that. And I think when we were watching, when we went and we did season one, it wasn't really until going into season two that the, the Barbara and Ian relationship became more center stage if you like there were there, you know there were stories where they, they didn't do a great deal until later on and, and obviously with Hartnell's ill health they they took a step up so that you know by the time they left they were the leading people in some of the you know, in some of the stories whereas in the early ones they were along for the ride if you like with the, the two main characters they have the same part though don't they Ian and Barbara in, in this as the tv so they they have their thing where they the pair of them go off to come at the Dalek City from another angle and all that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't think it's that, that she hasn't got enough to do in the narrative. I think, and and it's very defined, unlike the TV show where it was, you know, even by the end, you, you're meant to necessarily assume that Ian and Barbara are anything other than just colleagues. There's not actually anything underlying that saying that they're actually a couple here. Um, he's whereas this is from the start, he's bought a chocolate. So he's, he's, yeah. He's come around. He's her. He's her latest boyfriend. I like Shady Susan with as her <laughs> latest boyfriend. Um, so, so it's very clear that he is meant to be the the, the love interest here. But it's interesting that there's there's absolutely no connection at all between them throughout the film. Then for the rest of it, they, they you know, it's they, they're clearly they, they're dating, as you say, because of the chocolates. But there's no spark between the two characters. I don't feel through the film. No, because I mean, I suppose in the original, Barbara gets a bit flirty with another Thal, doesn't she? Who wants her to stop behind. Mm. She 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 gets the rip leather kex on, gives the tips and the wink. But in this, you don't even get that because you know there isn't time. You know, we've we've cut four episodes. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. That I, this is just that, and it's not it's not something that that bugs me or not. But I, I just just if you were looking at the four regulars and, and saying, oh, look, I'm not regulars it's one film but you know just to me i'm not quite sure she takes that into an, a place where it's maybe maybe she's doing too too under a performance because she's doing a drama performance because she's more more drama in terms of where she's at aesthetically and all that so maybe, maybe she's just not giving it the full camp that maybe it's a bigger performance would have been a more recognized i don't know yeah. But in some respects, it would draw focus from Roy Castle to to a degree, and I'm sure that's again not part of the consideration. But if you think about it, you know, Peter and um, Roy are, are seen as almost top billing in in the movie, and Roy Castle's there to be more of the comic foil, as you've said, um, and he's to get more of the kind of the, the slapstick and the laughs as we come through it, or to be seen as the the action 
hero as and when he calls for him to do so i.e you know when he goes to take the thal girl to the city and there's that little bit of action outside the tardis um so potentially you're right she might have been underplaying it slightly or just playing to what was being directed um maybe not to take the shine off roy but uh, you can't take it away from roberta toby though who i think dials in a, a terrific young performance um and earned herself the nickname one take toby for the ability of trying of getting most of her scenes in done in one take apparently so um and and again um unlike our tv counterpart susan she does obviously she does get to do an awful lot in this but seems to draw more focus i would say than our tv counterpart susan would have done in the seven part story what i love about the one take toby anecdote is that um debbie watling got the same anecdote when she did the invisible man so she was one take what thing she could get <laughs> oh. it in so I don't yeah. know whether it was was it was it was it the the thing that they did for kid actors at the time. Were like, oh Christ, it's going to cost us an absolute fortune if we have to keep redoing these. If we give them enough money for a bit of hicker mix. We can, we can get through this quicker. I think she also benefits that Susan in this has got more char char characterization. We when we looked at the first season, Susan's character almost changed story to story. She was like you know weird alien child then she was sort of like stroppy earth child and then she was you know psychic powers child it was like it was like it was, it was like please please nail down what you want this character to be and i think here because you don't have all of that baggage you just you just have this beautiful relationship with with uh peter cushing they everything well, when they're on screen together they just they just shine and then when she is on her own, she holds her own. She's, you know, she, she just curious and, and in, like you say, uh, about intelligent. She just, you know, she's like, right, I know what I need to do and, and goes off and, and, and does it. And I, and I think that really shines through. I, I think that this is not to take anything away from the TV version and, and um, you know, Carol Ann's portrayal but I like this Susan I think this Susan is self-assured it, it's, it's a solid character that you can relate to when we get the Russell multiverse I'm I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get Carol Ann and Roberta and Jane Asher <laughs> all and, and and thingy Claudia Grant we'll get them all together oh. in, in, in a crossover special just how amazing would that be <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. If nothing else, that, that is all I want. I want Susie Who with, with, with the rest. I, 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 want, I want it all to come in house so that it, it's all part of a, a thing. Susie Who would be giving our Susan the eye for, for, going, for getting married to David in the film. <laughs> well, yeah, because oh, there's a lot of confusion about that when we come on to that film, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, um, about that then. Absolutely uh, spoilers. <laughs> um, yeah, but I do. She, she does a really good job because there are a few parts which are literally sort of match to match. And the, the the run through the jungles are a really good piece. Like, I really that's beautiful shot. I mean, it's an amazing set. Love the the Dalek jungle, the Scarrow jungle, whatever we're going to call it. Um, it it does follow one of the the campus things in Doctor Who ever though, doesn't it? When when Aladdin appears in the TARDIS doorway, like he's pop into the loo uh, on Canal Street. It's just strange. <laughs> like, I love. <laughs> there, there is that moment, it's like, I'm Aladon. <laughs> and, and he's got all the high makeup and a glittery cape and everything else. And it's like, I know it's not meant to look like he's on the way to the discotheque, but it, 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 they have ramped it up because because the ones in the, in the TV series are just meant to be blonde and beautiful. Yes, yeah. Whereas this is sort of blonde and strictly disco glamour, isn't it? There's a sort of, this is just a step on from it. He thought he had a, a, a bit of Kylie on in the, uh, in the jungle and he was off. <laughs> if the doors had opened and your disco needs you kicked in, it would have been amazing. I think someone needs to maybe re-edit that. <laughs> There's a redub there easily. There's a... <laughs> Just, um, just a little bit of ADR for, for, for a bird to say, who does your eyeliner? <laughs> you look fabulous, darling. We, we've walked, we've walked miles and miles across the plains searching for food, but we have still got it on point. 
because it gives it gives Doctor Who the the cape in the end, doesn't he? The, as the parting gift, it's like you now may be fabulous yourselves. <laughs> you can go and start drag race in nineteen sixties Britain. Be gone with you. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's interesting. I mean, I the, the 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 crunch of the movie, I think, of having those seven episodes, which I know it's a different thing because you're going to the cinema to watch a movie for an hour and a half. Oh, we're watching a weekly serial and blah blah blah. But this puts it much because I was watching earlier because I fill my days with things like this. I was watching The Professionals, and then I watched the same. Thai TV Four just keeps giving, um, but those shows were sort of all conducive with with concurrent with when Doctor Who was on, and it's just amazing because you get a lot of the same actors and all that stuff. But an ITC series always looks so. I mean, they were so much more expensive, so much more exotically shot they they're all set in monte carlo or a, a, a sort of an african island they're, they're all sort of in this kind of glamorous worldscape whereas doctor who's very much he's invaded east london and we're shooting this at shepherd's bush sort of thing it, it but this movie i think is is that first glimpse of, of what a doctor who with money and that kind of gloss yeah. that, that that american gloss could could be i think yeah from a from a monetary point of view, uh, this film uh, the budget was one hundred and eighty thousand pound. Oh, that would have been a lot of money back in the day. Which was the equivalent to about three and a half, well, three point six million today. Or a night in Weatherspoons with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> three pints if you're watching this in two thousand and twenty-two. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, from I mean the budget for the next one was it was increased um but that was you know quite a sizable amount for if you think about how much they were spending on the tv series and they were churning them out every every week so you know from churning a, from, them out churning them out. them out they were churning them out it was like you know here's your script on a monday film on a friday you know it was it was churning them out for the man who gave dalek's master plan 10 points that's <laughs> shocking are we still on that? Always. Still, Always. Still defend my 10. Because um, I loved it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they bought, is it Amicus? Yeah, Amicus bought three Daleks, just bought the rights to three Dalek stories from Terry Nation for £500. So that, you know, gives you an idea of what it was what it was going for i mean we, we talked about terry nation's ambitions to get across into america uh, you know previously when we reviewed other um other stories but this was it was you know he was hoping that this would be the kickstart to you know bigger and better things for him and um they only took up the rights for two of those in the end there's, there's lots of different sort of stories. That I don't know how much of it's what it or not, because there was that thought that they liked the idea of doing Marco Polo, but they didn't think it would be an interesting enough subject for a film, which would have meant we'd have a Marco Polo movie, but not Marco Polo. Um, and that Terry sort of thought they could have Keys of Marinus because it was a junk, you know, you could you could do you could spend the money on going to the different locations for that. But then they said, actually, no, it's the Daleks that we want. The Daleks is what, I mean, the Daleks is what sells it in the Times School. Do mm. Doctor Who didn't come out for the second film. Yeah. Um, so th there are sort of different sort of stories on that, aren't they? And, and, and the notion that the third one would have been the chase, which I suppose in itself is the key to Marinus. Yeah. Um, but, but by that was... point, it's, it's Dalek done. But then there were other rumours that they were going to do something completely different different that they they were going to rest the Daleks and they were going to look at and like you say either a Marco Polo or some some other story to um to, to you know to put into the to the third movie but it ultimately didn't you know didn't come I think to about it. I think about the time this was made so this is this is this is probably height of Dalek mania isn't it Dalek mania starts mm -hmm. to tail tail off just a little bit as we got into sort of 66 and onwards slightly um but 64 65 this is this is a vehicle for daleks in reality and you know doctor who um 
and and the and the family are along for the journey um in both sort of films but in reality this isn't this is this is more about big screen daleks it's more about see nation's ambitions here for sure um and it would it it was seen that the daleks would sell well to an international market you know they, they, they will get taken off to the launching of the film and whatever but it's this is, this is all about daleks i think and i think if there had been a third film it would have been a dalek film not rest in the daleks because i don't think for, for all of the screen presence that or they all have the film would not carry just on peter cushing as doctor who i think you need both in there to balance that dynamic because that was what it was it was daleks in color big movie big screen not what you were seeing on the television i could have got hattie jakes in as mrs who maybe for both <laughs> 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 Eric Sykes is the master. I can see it now. <laughs> it, could, it could have been. It could have been a little domestic setup, couldn't it? The master could have just been an annoying scientist that lived next door. He didn't have to be a galactic villain. He could just be <laughs> someone that that puts weed killer on his garden or something. Oh. Oh. But, but it was the it was the like you say about selling the Daleks. This was the merchandise, you know. Um, so it was just massive after this, wasn't it? I mean, there was so much available. You're right; it tapped into that that moment in time where um, Dalit Mania was at its height. There were the toys. There was all of the movie merch that that came with it. Um, so yeah, you know, it, uh, uh, you know, a lot of money made. Uh, I suppose interestingly, it was also the, the the push to take it to America, which Doctor because they, they hadn't bought Doctor Who in America. They 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 definitely not bought Doctor Who. It's interesting because it, as from a television sales perspective, if you could sell something to America and get it syndicated, that that was that was the big money. That was the big time. Um, but Doctor Who was always I suspect a little bit too cheap looking for them to want mm. to buy up. That's why they buy up the Avengers, the Protectors, the Persuaders, yeah. the Adventurer, any of that because it looked expensive enough to the show. I mean, the Avengers upgrades itself, doesn't it? It goes from the, the Honor Blackman plunk around the studio to being on film for Rick, that's how it sells. So this is this is the first, and it, they, don't, they don't take it, do they? they don't, the movie isn't a hit in America. It, it's no. not something that they yeah. take to their heart, sadly. But, but Nation tries that further on down the line because the Destroyers was going to be a, a, a colour I ITC esque type series that he was eventually obviously going to sell to the primarily he wanted that in in America you know that they 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 saw an opportunity here um, that that wasn't there in the UK for them and take a, a color Dalek series with the Space Corp you know with Sarah Kingdom and whatnot to the to the states even though they were trying to do a deal to get the BBC to make it at the time again I think just just shows the ambition of where Nate. Um, Terry Nation was taking this um, and I think he missed the opportunity potentially with the movies, um, tried again then with that sort of Avengers-esque type approach to colour and um, a different way of storytelling it more for a, an adult audience rather than a, um, a children's audience. I suppose that, I mean, it's funny because because as a launch thing, it's it's not like TV's Doctor Who. It is a different thing. So to an audience, it's not going to have the same impact, a new audience, as Doctor Who did. Whereas over here, mm. everyone knew what it's a sold brand. It's just a, a different take on it. Which, interestingly, people must have been a lot more um, happy to just engage with. Whereas I think yeah. now people are a little bit more kind of questioning something like that. But I think it's quite interesting that the there was no attempt made to suggest that this was related other than the, you know, TARDIS and Doctor Who and Susan. You know, there wasn't an attempt made to say that these are the same characters you see every Saturday. That There isn't. Even the Daleks have a slight redesign. It's, it, it's sort of a version of. Mm. Um, but it, 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 it is designed just to sort of show off and capitalise on Daleks. And that's, that's, it is. that's the, mm. the unique selling point. It is because you had the stage show a similar time. I think the stage show in London had just been before, um, or, or around the time of the of the movie, because um, I think it was nineteen sixty five, Curse of the Daleks. So again, you know, it comes back to we said it a couple of times now, but it's tapping into that sort of Dalek mania at the time. Um, it it as long as it had Daleks in it, I think it had that it had that ability to succeed, 
and for the audience not to look that closely at it potentially because they were used to seeing Doctor Who on television. It would have been a year or two since they would have seen the Dalek serial and the, the sort of launch of Doctor Who. So potentially, you know, the, the audience um, age that this was aimed at wouldn't be thinking perhaps as um, as closely as as modern audiences are when we talk about this being a non-canon story rather than a canon story. But if you if you look at the popularity of like the the time machine in the nineteen sixties, you know, nineteen sixty film, this taps in. It's it's got that same sort of quality, sort of mad inventor of a time machine in the back of his house kind of. It was something that cinema goers, if you weren't already a Doctor Who fan, you could easily get with the format of the film because it's, it, it's you know, the, the premise behind it is quite similar. You know, Stranger gets whisked away to far off world and, you know, has an adventure. It's from a cinematic point of view that that, that stands on its own. So... I mean, a brief, brief pause here just to say, uh, look, <laughs> here is the latest of the, of the um, iterations of the release of um, his, his, his steel book. Look, with my um, special, it has been opened. Uh-huh. Just, just, just unsealed the top piece so I can slide it in and out and keep it in its plastic. <laughs> um, I didn't go all out for the £50 box with a... With a oh, it's, it's, have you got it, Jason? Bring it, bring it. Yes, I, I indeed have 50 got. pounds for a coin and a folded poster. It's coin and a folded poster, but there was 50 pounds here. Not open. And it's shrink and it's wrap not open. Still. You're quite correct because I don't want to open them just yet. He doesn't want to watch them before he reviews them, viewer. Well, as, the, as I'm sure you, as the viewer is already aware, as we noted it at the beginning of the recording, <laughs> I went to the uh, cinema recently and watched both of them on glorious 4K on the big screen, which was... I don't know why there were three Spider-Men in it, though. (laughs) (laughs) Or why I've seen this film three times. (laughs) Oh, you fell asleep in the cinema and just went through different films (laughs) during the day. (laughs) You went for the matinee and was still there at 10 (laughs) o'clock. They serve alcohol in the cinema, I'm fine. Oh dear. oh dear oh dear right do we have any cheap. other it's, it's actually cheaper to sit in the cinema than, and, and use the air conditioning rather than sit at home and, and use my own electric you tell you tell the police that when they go arrest you for loitering <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um, when we go to the cinema I, 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 you know I don't like going to the cinema I don't, I don't like people making noise around me I don't like them looking at their phones I, I just just, just, we are born in a barn. What are you? What are you? If it's a cinema showing, it's just, just, just like the two of us. I'm fine yeah. with that. But it's people breathing, it's people eating, it's people looking at things, people talking. It's, ah, I hate all of you. I, I hate to say this, and it probably sounds really awful, but I quite miss the pandemic in that regard because it's like you can go to a cinema, there's no one else in there because everybody's, everybody's at home. Ah, bring on the lethal virus. It clears the cinemas out to treat. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a strange quite, It's a strange quite star. extreme. Quite extreme, that I have to say. <laughs> I'm sure if you went in the cosplay, it'd clear a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it comes oh, I don't know. Apart talking. from Jason, who's sat on the back with, with a bottle of white lightning and just watching whatever <laughs> films come through. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, do we have exotic facts on Doctor Who and the Daleks? The trouble is, normally I do Doctor Who and then it's like I'm being kooky. Now it actually is. Do we have any stories on the Doctor Who and the Daleks? Um, let me just have a look because we covered quite a few of them. And the jungle scenes, you know, it's, I really like that when they come out of the TARDIS and they're in the sort of petrified forest. So that that effect uh, was done by r- removing the... Um, anamorphic lens so the widescreen lens off the camera uh, which gave that sort of eerie creepy look when they were in the forest uh barry gray does the music for this who um, does the electric music he does the all electric, of that 
about as electric music. They did a lot of work for Jerry Anderson produ um, productions. Um, yeah. I think we were talking about how, you know, menacing the Daleks look, uh, but I do find it quite uh, amusing that all you have to do is put a cloak underneath them and that kills them. It's like, <laughs> so just roll over this <laughs> and that's it. But, you know, apart from that, they are quite intimidating. Malcolm Lock Lock Lockyer, isn't it? That does the the, the, the the brassy big band music mm -hmm. for it. It's quite funny because again, even the, even the music gives it a different scape, doesn't it, to the TV series? Because I suppose Carrie Blight might be on the same wavelength, but it, there aren't many or two stories actually on TV that would have that kind of sort of sixties swing band vibe that this has got. And it doesn't. It's, it doesn't contain any iteration of the Doctor Who theme. So. I know we've we've had lots of different versions of the over the year, but it's it's a completely different uh, intro music. I think it would have been like Eric Winston and his orchestra, wouldn't it? If they'd have had a, a theme tune for, for for the movies, it, would have, it definitely would have been one of those, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, <laughs> do we have scores on the doors for the Doctor Who and the Daleks? Yeah, go on. I, I will go for it. Look at Jason's face. It's just like, oh, UK, UK, UK. Um, I, I, well, I would have, I would have gone first, but it's fine. Oh, he was mesmerised by your bag of popcorn. I um, <laughs> so I, 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 I hate to repeat a lot of what I've already said, but this is really uh, such a nice, comfortable. Uh, nostalgic feel, uh, feeling watching this film and you know wh whilst you you could sort of you know point out a few things in, in this I think there's a lot about it that I love I love the Daleks in this I think they they look impressive and and I wish that you know the production value and the money behind it um but sadly sadly not but there we go um so yeah um it was a really enjoyable 79 minutes so i scored it an eight. Oh, i thought you were going to score it 79 then <laughs> <laughs> or 7.9 <laughs> so 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 an eight was is that an eight, the split? An yeah. eight. If, if it didn't exist, then it was just telly snaps and then five minutes, five minutes. Do you think it would have made it to ten? No, because it doesn't have the monk in it. <laughs> Did you give the Time Medal a ten? No, he didn't give no. the Time Medal a ten. But that doesn't have the Daleks in it. Oh, honestly. Yeah, I think he would have if it had been telly snaps, though, I think, because there's a common theme starting to come out here with the uh, telly snaps. Oh, I, I saw a really fab thing on, 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 the, the, on the Twitter. Someone <laughs> had recreated um, the opening of the Time Meddler as if it didn't exist, as if it was a VHS recomp using the telly snaps. It's really amazing, though, because actually it's, it's, lovely, it's lovely to see because it's one of those weird things you think... <gasps> you think how much you get from just being able to watch it against, you know, the, the sort of like the savages are you oh crikey that be anyway that was a yeah go on jason i'll start i'll start my popcorn and you, you, start, you, you, with you. you start your popcorn make me feel hungry distract me while i'm making my score here but a lot of what james said so i'm not going to repeat a lot of that there it's it's actually a nice little bit of a um a, a glorious watch this one uh it's interestingly it works out uh, I, I think it works out at about 10 minutes an episode they take they manage to take about 15 minutes an episode out of the original uh, of the original seven part to get to this film I think but anyway that aside it looks glorious and I love the Daleks in color in this they are properly psychedelic in a way with their blue bases and the gold and black Dalek with its alternating hemispheres. Um, they look glorious. Um, and the and the external TARDIS prop, I have to say, looks amazing in this. Although I have to say my OCD really does get me when I can see through the windows, but I can't see through the windows when I'm inside. We won't get there. Um, I think that the, the sets are amazing, although please 
please, please, please tell me why the Dalek city has the rocks that open up. Tell me what part of that um, can anyone explain? But take all that aside, we've got a great lineup on the cast. You know, Peter Cushing in particular, I think is great in this. Um, it's a nice, easy watch. And with that, I would give it a very solid seven. Oh. Ooh. It's a solid seven. It's a solid seven. Is that they don't leave the city, they do this. They're not going to climb down the rocks. So they can have the Thunderbirds reveal, can't they? It's amazing, though. I, I don't understand what it does. But just that the Daleks can come a little bit lower. Well, they don't go down that bit. No, they, nobody goes down they that come bit. Onto, well, they come out onto like a little balcony thing, don't they? Um, Susan climbs down the rocks at the front. The, the interesting thing is that Jason's worried about, about the rock opening on Doctor Who Daleks, but none of the plot points of Resurrection of the Daleks trouble him. None of it. They, the only thing I would ask is why why is it that the doors open when someone sits on a block and how does the Dalek do that? That's a great little bit of comedy skit for our for Roy Castle there, isn't it? Oh, and, and I forgot to mention the end bit where they throw where they he, he's he's they open the doors and the, there's that bit of nasty Roman. bit of overlay and they're all the they're all the Romans are all coming at them and he's there tinkering with the oh dear God no I've forgotten about that no I've scored it now it's a seven. He was about to change his score just because of the closest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a solid seven. An army of Romans and Jason's like, I'll give it an eight. <laughs> no, he'd say it wasn't like that in Roman days from his memories. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Anyway, mm. moving on from that old relic. Um, I like there was a moment there where he didn't hear that, then he heard it, he heard it, and then he processed it. <laughs> you missed all of that, folks, all of that. You um, did. Anyway, um, yeah, it is fun, it is bright. It's, it's one of those, I think, again, um, as I've, you know, weekly moan about these things and talk about them, I think people are a lot more accepting of the movies now than they ever were. They're always sort of, actually, I think they were slightly ignored when I was younger. People didn't even sort of include them, they didn't reference them much or there were, there were sort of articles on them or features and I think now people are a bit more like, hey, although I honestly would like this to be the last time that I have to buy this <laughs> in any iteration. I mean, you know, I can see that there is a, there, there's a definite change in the, you know, the picture quality and all that sort of stuff in the new versions. Of, you know, so, so if you haven't got them, it's worth it. But yeah, they do look lovely. Um, although 4K can be a little bit un unforgiving on some of the stuff that it wasn't made in 4K to show. That's yeah. the only problem. I think more so in the next one. We on the next anyway. one. In the next one for sure. Um, anyway, no, I, I think it's great. It's bright. It's fun. It's only 79 minutes. Lots of great performances. Lots of colour. Bam, bam. Doctor Who. And I give it seven. That's a great score. I, I just, I'm just slightly shocked that we scored it the same. I love it. I oh, know mine was a seven. Mine wasn't a solid seven. Oh, okay. I, I just thought seven would do. No, seven's okay, but not a solid seven. I mean, I don't know if it makes it a mushy seven. I don't know. Um, which gives Doctor Who and the Daleks 22 points. They should have just canned series 20 and just showed the <laughs> Dalek movie for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I think that scored more than three of the stories in season 22, hasn't it? Or 21 even. I think, I think, I think it could be like second place on season 21. <laughs> anyway, we will return for the next part with more popcorn. Ooh, I might get picked next for that one. Um, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Pleasure as always. Indeed, a pleasure as always. Nice to be here. And hopefully Jason will pimp the old tap behind to make it look like a decent Dalek movie Dalek. <laughs> you leave Rusty alone. He's perfectly fine in that 60s livery. Mm. Give, some, give him some big eyes, nice claw arm. <laughs> I'll, get a up, of cups, I'll get a couple of cups out of the kitchen now and stick them over the eyes, over the, um, over the lights. 
as if you'd have old pint glasses knocking around. <laughs> right, anyway, we shall see you soon. <laughs>